Hey y'all, Ibrick Sky here, and uh, on April the 8th of 2017, and you can, you can check the card that I've linked within this video, but actually I had predicted at that point in time that DJI Phantom was going to be discontinued. Now, obviously DJI Phantom has been discontinued now, and I want to talk about why DJI Phantom was discontinued, because a lot of people that may not be too savvy with drones may assume that, oh, DJI Phantom's the best drone ever. You know, why did they discontinue? Why did DJI discontinue the DJI Phantom? Because it was the best drone on the market. Now, at one point, that was without a doubt the case. You know, Phantom was number one. It wasn't too big. It wasn't too heavy. But it was, you know, it, was, it wasn't optimal to travel with because it was still kind of large, but it was still worth it because you could capture outstanding video. You know, starting out it wasn't 4K, but you know, we started out with, uh, with full HD and then we segued into uh, 4K Ultra HD. So, you know, with the, one of my favorite Phantom models, fan, one of my favorite Phantom models rather was the Phantom 4, which, you know, it just did 4K 30, but it was great. I, I never really cared for the Phantom 4 Pro the one that would do 4K 60. But the Phantom 4, that was without a doubt my favorite Phantom. Captured some outstanding video with it. Actually, the intro clip to this video, where I'm flying over the island, and if you look real closely, you can see me sitting underneath one of the trees. But uh, that was a video that I filmed with the Phantom 4 in 4K. So just, a, just an incredible drone. Again, not too big, not too heavy. Still a little bit inconvenient to travel with. And that's, that's, that's going to lead us into my reason why I'm convinced the DJI discontinued the Phantom. So number one, you know, you're looking at something that's, that's not optimal. I mean, it's, it's larger than the Mavic and the Mavic 2. It's heavier than the Mavic and the Mavic 2. And you know what? Mavic 2 Pro with a one-inch sensor Hasselblad camera, it smokes the video performance. It smokes the photo performance of all of the DJI Phantoms. And it, it actually has better battery life as well. So why would a consumer want to go with something that's bigger, that's heavier, when they can get better performance, video, photo, battery life, better performance from a smaller and lighter package? You know, and, and it handles the wind well. Something with the original Mavic Pro, the original Mavic Pro, it didn't really seem to have flight dynamics, in my opinion, that were as good as the Phantom. So for that reason, when Mavic Pro, the original Mavic Pro came out, I stuck with Phantom 4 as being my go-to drone because it was great video quality, it was great video stability, the battery life was good, and I didn't have to deal with the Mavic Pro. The original Mavic Pro had really wonky focus issues. I never could, with the original Mavic Pro, I could never get the quality of video that my channel deserves. So for that reason, I stuck with the, uh, with the Phantom 4. But when Mavic 2 came out, Mavic 2 has been a game changer. Now I use the Mavic 2 Pro because I like that one inch sensor camera. I can get outstanding 4K 30 video. I can get outstanding still photos. That Hasselblad camera on the Mavic 2 Pro is the best thing that I've experienced from a drone to date. So, you know, back to the question, why has DJI chosen to discontinue the Phantom line? Well, obviously they realize that they've created something much better, that being the Mavic series. And the Mavic 2 Pro is just, that's, that's the icing on the cake. I mean, that said, hey, we're not just awesome, we're better than great. And <laughs> I, I think from a, from an engineering perspective, people that work at DJI, they would be like, well, you know, how can we make people, how can we, how can we pitch it? I mean, they probably had their marketing team, they probably had their, their R&D team, you know, all the nerdy types, all the salesy types. They probably had all those people in a room and they're like, well, what about this Phantom 5? Are we gonna release a Phantom 5? And they probably looked at each other kind of stumped because, well, we got something that's so much better. You know, how are we going to, you know, how are we going to get people to go from the smartphone back to the bag cell phone? Well, in this scenario, it wouldn't be the bag cell phone. I would compare the, 
the, the Phantom to a uh, flip phone, and then of course the Mavic 2 Pro to a, uh, to a current generation smartphone. So it was probably a tough challenge for them to, to continue with that series, continue with the Phantom series. And if they, if they released a Phantom 5, but it didn't have the DJI Phantom's DNA, it looked completely different, then why would they, why would they still use that name? So they were, they were kind of out of luck. You know, well, we can't, we can't release something because it's going to seem inferior. We can't radically change it because then it's not going to have the DJI Phantom's DNA and people aren't really going to recognize it. At that point, we should get a, give it a different name. But I think from a... Uh, you know, from a, a pure branding perspective, you know, DJI has not only introduced the world to drones, but they've introduced the world to people, introduced drones to people that may not even know what a drone is, but they say, oh, do you know what a DJI Phantom is? It's got that name recognition. Even among the non-drone camp, it's got that name recognition. People hear DJI Phantom, they may, they may not even know it's called a drone or a quadcopter. They may just say, Man, that's that, that's that thing that flies around. It's got those propellers on it, you know, or something like that. You know, there's a lot of people that, that may be very uh, out of the loop when it comes to drones. But when you say DJI Phantom, you know, that, that name is automatically probably going to click in their mind. So for that reason, it's kind of painful that, uh, that DJI has chosen to abandon the Phantom line just from a pure... Uh, name perspective you know they've and I wouldn't say they've lost I, I would say they've uh, my, my phone is going off I wouldn't say they've uh, I wouldn't say that my secretary will get that but I wouldn't say they've lost by choosing to abandon the Phantom I look at it as a way of them embracing what their fans like myself Iron Skies Adventure Channel and Epic Drone Show have been preaching since they released the Inspire. The Inspire was too big. The Inspire was too heavy. And when DJI released the Inspire after their Phantom was doing so well and then they released the Inspire, I'm like, uh-oh, you know, they're gonna, this is the nail in their coffin. You know, they're going bigger. They're going heavier. They're going more expensive. You know, this is gonna be the nail in their coffin. But then they pleasantly surprised me with the Mavic Pro, which again, I didn't really, it, I still preference the Phantom 4 over the Mavic Pro because I could get better, consistently excellent video, 4K video from the Phantom 4, and I couldn't do that with the Mavic Pro. But then Mavic Air came out. Mavic Air bridged the gap very well. Autofocus worked exceptionally well for the Mavic Air. The, uh, the flight dynamics of the Mavic Air were exceptional. It was very small, it was very lightweight, easy to travel with, and it was a great drone. Mavic Air actually is something that that I used in conjunction with the Phantom 4. The Phantom 4 had advantages. Phantom 4, again, fly line of sight to be safe and responsible, but the Phantom 4 had greater range. The Phantom 4 had an improved communications technology. What was it called? Light bridge? Whereas the Mavic Air did not have that. But again, when Mavic 2 Pro came out, Mavic 2 Pro put everything to shame. Put Mavic Air to shame, put Phantom 4 to shame, and obviously put the Inspire to shame. So, you know, it's... Uh, it's just, it's, it's that time, you know, every, every product has to, has to reach its deathbed. And Phantom has done that. You know, Phantom has, Phantom has served us well. You know, Phantom is the, is the product that, you know, if, if, if the DJI Phantom was a person and it, it had a funeral, it would be a packed house. You know, it would be like a, it would be like a app, like an Apple launch event. You know, people would be lined up to get in there. That's how, that's how well respected uh, the you know the DJI if someone was a DJI fan and that's how well respected they would be because they 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 just they changed the world and and they were well respected and and they were top quality uh, from a design perspective from a performance perspective but with that being the case you know everything comes and goes everything dies and in this case the Phantom the Phantom has died. But the Phantom has served a lot of us well, and we've learned so much from the Phantom. What's funny, though, is that a lot of the competitors don't seem to have learned from the Phantom. You know, they've tried to emulate, they've tried to trump, and they've all failed epically. So, you know, it's one of those situations where 
it's the Phantom has done more for drones than anything else could have, I think. <clears throat> because imagine if imagine if drones had not been introduced by DJI. Imagine if DJI Phantom had not been the drone that just excited everyone to death. Drones may not have become as popular as they are today had Phantom not stepped in. You know, so Phantom has Phantom has lived a very purposeful life cycle. Phantom has done a lot for the world. And it's, you know, again, it's, it's kind of sad to see it go. You know, Phantom is gone. We will never have Phantom again. You know, and it's, <clears throat> there's still little Phantoms sitting around being sold, and, and you can find them on epicdroneshow.com. But, you know, as those, as those supplies dwindle, <clears throat> it's going to be hard to, it's going to be hard to find a Phantom. And then before you know it, you'll probably see Phantoms popping up in, in uh, junk stores and, and that sort of stuff because they'll be so old and decrepit and, and it's, uh, you know, it's kind of sad when you look at it from that perspective. But again, people shouldn't dwell upon the fact that Phantom has been discontinued. People should say, look, look at what a great life Phantom led. Look at what a great, uh, you know, look at, look at what all, all the positive things that DJI Phantom ushered in. So I think this is just a small stepping stone for something even grander. And, and the launch event, at the time of posting this video, May the 15th, I don't know if that's going to be the next big thing. I kind of think it may be just kind of a lackluster type announcement. It could be cool, but I don't think it's going to be the next big thing. I think what we're really going to see here, and again, mark my words, because I predicted DJI discontinuing the Phantom, what was it, two years? It was back in 2017. Again, check the cards, check the link within this video's description. You can find my old video there where I predicted DJI Phantom being discontinued. But, uh, you know, it's just, it, it's, a, it's an important next step. And I, and I think, especially with DJI's acquisition of, uh, or I shouldn't say acquisition, I think they're a, they've got heavy ownership of Hasselblad, the Swedish camera manufacturer. And again, Hasselblad's a camera that's on the Mavic 2 Pro. I think what we'll probably see, what we should see, we should see DJI further utilize uh, that controlling interest in, uh, in Hasselblad to bring us some things we've never thought of. You know, stick with your bread and butter form factor. Mavic 2, great size, handles the wind better than Mavic Air, handles the wind in my opinion, the flight dynamics and all that are, I mean, just as good if not better. I don't know if I'd say they're better, just as good. As the, uh, as the Phantom. Because the Phantom, you know, it did have an advantage. It was heavy, it handled the wind quite well, but the Mavic 2 Pro does is also. The Mavic 2 Pro handles wind well also. So what we may see, and what I strongly predict, is that we'll see something that's a tier above the Mavic 2. You know, the Mavic 2 in DJI's lineup is probably gonna fill the gap that, that DJI Phantom being no more is going to, uh, you know, Mavic 2 would logically fit in there. The Mavic Air would logically fit a tier below the Mavic 2, and that would probably do away. I don't know if we're going to see another Spark, but the continued advancement of the Mavic Air would fill the need for a very entry-level drone. But what we're missing, and what I think we should see soon, is a drone again, based very closely upon the Mavic 2's proven form factor. Great battery life, great travel size, great travel weight, but provide additional enhancements that can be provided as the result of DJI's controlling interest of Hasselblad. So, you know, with that being the case, I would expect to see a something more advanced than the current model Mavic 2 Pro, something with interchangeable lenses, and also interchangeable camera bodies. So I would expect to see, at a minimum, an interchangeable lens Hasselblad camera that fits on a, on a form factor similar to the size of the Mavic 2. But I would also expect to see modular camera options. So if I want to put a 360 degree VR camera, spherical camera, whatever you want to call it, if I want to put that on that drone body, I can. If I want to put the interchangeable lens camera on that drone body, I can. If I want to put a zoom lens on that interchangeable lens camera, I can. So it's going to be a matter of DJI engineering using, you know, taking advantage of Hasselblad, but
but engineering a series of lenses that are small, lightweight, and will fit well on that aerial platform. And again, that aerial platform, at this point, people should look at that upcoming aerial platform as something that's, that's a tripod of sorts. It's a flying tripod. You know, you get the tripod, tripods are something that are seldom upgraded. There's really no need. They serve a purpose. Just like this tripod that I'm filming this video with. They hold a camera steady. I've got my viewfinder beside it so I can make sure I'm in, inside of the frame and I've got a little bit of gap above my head, so I am. They serve a purpose and they're not often upgraded. But the cameras that attach to those tripods are upgraded quite frequently. Better camera technologies come out and camera with better battery life, blah, blah, blah. But most of those newer cameras will fit on that older tripod. So I see DJI pivoting their business model a little bit into something where the drone becomes more of a tripod of sorts. You know, it's just an accessory for their bread and butter. Their interchangeable lens cameras, their VR spherical cameras, what other, whatever other accessories you may want to attach to the drone. So it's going to be a fun ride, and I think that DJI discontinuing Phantom is an extreme positive, and a lot of people haven't hyper-analyzed it yet. So I'm going to. <laughs> I'm going to tear it apart. And my prediction, again, not to, not to be arrogant or cocky or anything like that, but I predicted the demise of Phantom two years ago. And you can watch my video that was dated two years ago. You know, I'm not, I'm not shooting you a line of smoke here. This is the real deal. So with that being said, I'm all over it. I'm super excited. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash iRicksGuy, and ring that bell icon when you do, and that'll let you be notified whenever I post another video. Also, for all of your drone drone accessory needs, drone tutorial needs, and other camera stuff as well, go to epicdroneshow.com. You can just go to epicdroneshow.com or you can expand this video's description and then click the link there to go to epicdroneshow.com. That helps me a lot. I'm an independent YouTuber. I'm very passionate about this stuff. But again, being an independent YouTuber, it's your subscriptions your comments, your views, and the support that you choose to provide. And again, you can choose to shop on EpicDroneShow.com. You can choose to support me on Patreon. But in its purest form, simply subscribing, sharing with others, and encouraging everyone you know to subscribe to my channel provides tremendous value. So again, thanks for your viewership, and it's going to be a fun ride. DJI Phantom has been discontinued, but this is just the beginning of a new journey. Y'all have a good day. Hey y'all, Irick Sky here. Thanks again for your viewership. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and ring that bell icon to be notified whenever I post another video. If you're looking for uh, Irick Sky's Adventure Channel merch, like this t-shirt and a lot of other cool stuff, expand this video's description. You can find it all there. Y'all have a good day.